Hello. How Hi. are you today? I'm fine today. You know, I'm doing good. Yeah. Existing. Yeah. I'm alive. I have a hot goss. I went to a crystal <laughs> store with Heather. You went to? Yeah. Did you buy yourself? No. But I wanted. Did to someone buy a offer lot of to things. buy you? No. <laughs> I saw a TikTok filter that was like, "What crystal are you?" And I was like, <laughs> I wanted to see what the, what the options were because. <laughs> That would have been so funny. You never know what you're going to get. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my Welcome. God. Hello to today's adventure, where we find out what kind of crystal we have today. Is she sassy? Is she <laughs> angry? Is she, is she mean? Is she happy? Is she joyful? Is she giggly? Is she silly? Is she snarky? disgusted is she, is she, is she annoyed is she, is she going to slap ariel from a thousand miles away possibly yes we found our answer we don't uh, need a wheel for that no we really don't oh We're man wheel of wheel of fate crystal style crystal style da, na, na, na. are you mixing gangnam style and mc hammer together i mix a lot of things together i know i just oh, clearly oh, oh. words songs you know. Food. Oh my god. My boobs look so big in this dress. I like usually get this angle. I'm sorry. I can't. It's after school. How are you? Well, apparently just fucking regretting this entire decision. Oh. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. Did you see all the drunk Taylor things I sent you? I didn't know you sent me stuff. I've just been scrolling TikTok with for drunk Taylor last night. I was having a grand old time. I sent you some. Oh, I didn't see what you sent me. That's awesome. I'll I'll be. Isn't it amazing? Check it though? Out. I'll check. I, I I was checking out everybody's stuff. She was having a grand old time. Oh, absolutely. So Anywho, anyways, off a of drunk Taylor. Today <laughs> we are not talking about drunk Taylor today. Mm -hmm. Today we are talking about Sophie Lark. Is she drunk? I don't know. Was she drunk while writing? Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't talk about people like that. This is not <laughs> love is. This is not the love is books where she definitely no. had to be drunk no. writing those. No, 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 no. Hey, I will take any time my name is compared or mentioned in a sentence with Taylor Swift. So that was not shade to Sophie Lark. It's okay. I'm not really distracted by my hands. <laughs> I know. Oh my god. I'm not drunk, I promise. Ariel can't get <laughs> drunk, so I don't know what's happening. I wish. I have water. I've had some. Pure vodka. Don't let her fool you. Today. I think I need to drink to deal with you today. Jesus Christ. On this week's episode of the Smutty Book Club, we read There Are No Saints by Sophie Lark. There Are No Saints is book one of the Sinner's Duet. And we read the illustrated kindle version which is super cool i love that sophie lark does that i've read i'm gonna be um, honest different... i didn't realize i was reading the illustrated version so i was pleasantly surprised oh yeah i love that the only slight kind of thing i have is i've read her illustrated versions before and they were in color so i was like oh sad face that these were black and white it was fine it fit the vibe so maybe that's why that choice was made. But anywho, so we are talking about There Are No Saints today. There Are No Saints features Cole Blackwell and Mara Eldritch. Cole is a, I'm going to call him a famous, because he's at least famous in the art world circles, famous artist. And Mara is a starving artist. That's going to say, and she's not a famous artist. Mara is a starving artist. But she made a very big point that she is not actually starving. Correct. She knows the difference. So this book opens up basically at an art showcase where a bunch of famous artists are just milling around, checking things out because there's like a, a little competition going and a winner is to be selected for the night. And it's vibing through the room that it's going to come down to Alistair Shaw or... Cole Blackwell and Alistair Shaw is Cole's biggest rival in the 
art world, but he would tell you that he's not a rival of his because he does not even come close to his level. I but, will say the amount of fucking eye rolls I did throughout this entire book was so much. Really? What do you mean? Every time Cole spoke, my eyes just went like this. You didn't like him? No. Oh. <laughs> Well, I guess spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to counter that with, I did not roll my eyes. So we're going to get there. And so Cole would tell you that his art is eons beyond what Alistair can even hope to achieve. But he knows that there's a critic in the room that he has been not quite nice to in the past. So he has made it his mission kind of to make sure to vote against him every time so he's like oh well i know i'm not gonna win this one there's no sweat off his back he doesn't care he's not there for the accolades like whatever but we learn in this that alistair shaw is a serial killer i'm a little confused at the beginning of this because we know from the blurb i guess maybe we shouldn't have read the blurb but we know from the blurb that cole is also a serial killer so I was basically like, what is this? It's just an artist murder club over here? Because Listen, now all they're of a rich and had... bored. I don't know. I know. It was now, so now we had two famous artists pitted against each other that just happened to both be serial killers and both know that they're both serial killers. So apparently, Alistair is a serial killer and not a great one. I mean, he's, I meant well, like, he's, he's kind good of because he hasn't about been it. caught. He's just, that's what I meant. Yeah. That, he's sorry, got a yes, thing for co-eds. I mean. I mean, he's not great because he's just savage and like he doesn't have the finesse and the coldness that Cole does. I would argue that all serial killers aren't great, but you know. Right. He has passion and lack of control where Cole has control at all times. And Cole, Cole has no soul. And <laughs> Cole <laughs> thinks it's very distasteful. He thinks a lot of things. He's like that. I thought it was very strange (laughs) that (laughs) Cole kept changing back and forth between his first name and his last name, though. That bothered me just a little, you know. So we also get a glimpse at Mara, but only through Cole's eyes. She is at this art showcase. She's milling around the food table because she's a starving artist. This is probably her only meal of the day and she's shoveling in food as fast as she can. And he kind of watches her for a minute because she's acting like a psycho over the cheese. A peasant. A peasant, exactly. She's, ugh, distasteful. I know. But then he, he really... watches, it's really comical, honestly. And then he well, watches. such a dick about it. Sorry. I kind of liked it. I thought it was I'm cute. glad you liked it. Comical. Girl, listen. <laughs> He watches how somebody knocks into her and spills wine all over her dress. And she just kind of shrugs her shoulders, leaves to go to the bathroom, comes out seven, eight minutes later and has tie dyed her dress with With her wine. Yeah. And fixed it all brand new. And he's actually kind of impressed by that. And that's a big deal because he's impressed by the art, not by her. No, Um, but by that. He makes it very clear. I will say (laughs) he makes it very clear quite a lot i will say i did highlight something in this chapter which was in fact the only person within my view i don't recognize is the skinny girl shoving cheese into her mouth over at betsy's excellent buffet spread and i just said this is an amazing description and how anyone should ever describe me at a party (laughs) oh did you get the one i sent you the tiktok i sent you of there's two people at a party drunk taylor and then selena I'm the tie. I already know that I'm drunk, Taylor. We so. don't even need to try to. And I'm <laughs> Selena, so it's okay. <laughs> Just sitting there. Anyway, so Danvers is the judge that holds a grudge against him. He's the judge with the grudge. <laughs> Are you good over there? Like, what the hell is going on, girl? <laughs> Normally, Cole kills for purpose mm-hmm. versus emotion. And so he's sitting there doing his art and he realizes that a piece is missing and he can see what he needs in his brain. And he's like, I do have someone I could get rid of that could solve lots of problems and bye bye Danvers. And it's funny that he he has to completely explain out. He's like, I have to keep tight control any human emotions. He's like, I'm aware academically that the full range of human emotions, I've studied them. 
but they have no power over me. I only feel intensely rage and pleasure and revulsion, but I keep them with tight control or I'd be no better than Slaw. Shaw. I'd be no better than Shaw. Law. He'd be slave to his like coleslaw. On the He'd be coleslaw on the side, a slave to his impulses, some slaw on the side. Listen, all I had um, to say though was this part when he murders Danvers. I'm just like, so Danvers hurt his feelings, so his reaction is just let's just murder him. <laughs> well, he says, I'm not killing Danvers because I have to, I'm killing him because I want to. Because he got, his distinct... little man, he got his little man feelings hurt, so his solution was to murder him because he needed his rib cage, he needed his bones. It's so, he grinded a... them all down and dipped them in gold and made a beautiful sculpture that sold for $750,000. That Goodbye, was... Danvers, again. I think it was just that it was fresh in his mind, and he conceptually saw what pieces could be used in there, and he's like, meh, solves two, bir- two birds with one stone. This man Sounds is not great. hurting my feelings, and I can sell a sculpture for a lot of money. Oh, but, but wait, he doesn't have feelings. feelings. I'm sorry. He doesn't have yeah, feelings. It wasn't, he but does. it wasn't about the feelings. He didn't care about the prizes. He didn't care about, he didn't need money. He just didn't like someone being a peon. He's beneath him. He was repulsed because Danvers was letting his feelings run him. Yeah, but you don't get to decide to end someone's life just because someone's letting their feelings run them. He also really does not- But he's a serial killer. I'm aware of this. He makes his own rules. He's a serial (laughs) killer who let his little man feelings get hurt and then use those to murder. I don't want to hear this argument anymore. Someone needs to check Ariel's basement. <laughs> Especially since I really identified too much with this female main character. Oh, good lord. Yeah, okay, so here's the thing. I loved the female main character. I loved her a lot. Oh, just you wait. Her weird I... idiosyncrasies and neuroticness oh, yeah. are no, mine. I know. It's But I, I liked her a lot. My huge thing was <laughs> the amount of times that Cole stated that he does not find her attractive and he says it a lot he goes i don't find her attractive." he said it quite a few times how much he yeah that's why i had an issue because he's like i don't find her attractive i don't think she's attractive she is not my type she is not attractive and here we are oh i don't think i caught that so we meet mara she's a hot mess express i highlighted a lot with mara because i don't know if that's why i vibe so much with her and I don't usually really base that much on like different characters or books on how much like I connect with them so I don't know why this one just did it for me but there's a couple she's like I've never been a fan of people who smile too much it feels like they're trying to force you to smile back at them it makes my face tired (laughs) I'm too easily irritated the guy eats a slice of pizza and tries to kiss me he makes a clicking sound when he swallows hangnail touches my skin he even thinks about kissing my ears like Listen, no, thank you. I don't I even, even want to be near him. And dude, same. So it's funny same. because I wrote down, I said, Mara getting irritated with sex is so funny and relatable. And my brain instantly went to, Ariel's going to relate to this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Act, yeah, nobody better fucking touch my ears. But yeah, she's great. I don't, she's a hot mess, but something about her just really mm-hmm. clicked well. So we find she's living in this Victorian apartment place that has been sectioned off into like 12 different apartments that should not be sectioned off. It's basically like cardboard walls over here. It's not going great, but trying to have, you know, a life as a starving artist, she's holding up three jobs just to make ends meet. And she finds out that now of all things, her studio space is being taken away too. And that's hard enough because it's almost impossible to find studio space in the area. She even got to see the prized Danvers statue and thought it was amazing. amazing. And she's walking home from that event. And she had seen Shaw at the event and talked to him a little bit. But she kind of didn't want to really talk to him because her one of her roommate, Aaron, kind of called dibs Mm -hmm. on him and she was being weird about and she's like i don't want anything to do with him anyways i was just there for the food yeah and she's walking home and 
all of a sudden she's hit over the back of the head and shoved in a trunk. And Mitch gets kidnapped she, in the first, like, very beginning of this book. Right. And she wakes up. In the trunk. And she's, you know, been kidnapped, blah, blah, blah. She wakes up, she's taken out of the t- trunk, and immediately someone is piercing her nipples. I was she's like, so, hold on a second. I know. I, know. I was like... No, it was just was funny because like, oh, no. she's in the back of the <laughs> truck. Like, and... Crystal's going to be so mad at this book. <laughs> so it's funny because you told me, all, and I was fine. The book didn't bother me at all. I didn't. I wouldn't have even needed a day. I didn't even warn you. I was like, nope, I'm not going down this journey. Again, you've broken me. It's fine. We're here now. So, okay. no, it we're was just, just, a, it's just so funny because she's in this trunk and she wakes up and her shirt's gone. And she like, yep. well, she doesn't notice it until the trunk's open and she feels a breeze. The breeze. But, like, the whole time. But she's she's hog tied in there. Well, yeah. And this whole time she's trying to think of like, how the fuck do I get out of this trunk? She's freaking out. She's like, I need to figure out how to do this. And it was crazy. And then all of a sudden she just feels like this pierce into the pain. And then the other one, and then she realizes her nipples got pierced. I'm going to tell you right now from experience, that shit fucking hurts. <sighs> and I did it willingly. Imagine if someone did that to me unwillingly. God, they would be dead. Hog time, like yeah. right? Oh my God, I don't Just... like being constrained so much because it really like caught like the not constipation. That's not the word. <laughs> what is what is it? What is that word where you don't like being in circulation? Oh, 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 oh! Right? <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> starts with claustrophobia yeah thank you (laughs) it makes me feel so freaked out yeah it was just constipation it's not constipation i would have probably shit myself in that situation i'd be opposite of constipated she like gets dropped down in this like wooded area she doesn't know where they are this is this dude she can't really see and he just picks up her wrists and just slices down her arm deep deep cuts on both and then just leaves her there to die it was he left her there to die i'm not continuing with the song because <laughs> i'm so disappointed in you so cole <laughs> was just disposing of the remains of mr denvers in these like old old freaking shafts that like aren't being used anymore they go like down way deep 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 in the ground and he's never going to be seen again it's his dumping ground and apparently sean knows that he didn't know sean knew that so he's a little mit murfed about that he's a little like Murr. and so he finds out because shaw left him a prezi yes he did well left mara right in his path coming out of the place and he sits there and he's like what the fuck and he knows exactly who it was, what it was, and why. And he's sitting there trying to figure out his course of action. He can tell what Shaw wants him to do with her, but he's not going to give in to Shaw. And he's not going to become like Shaw, a slave to impulses. This was not a a planned thing. This was not a premeditated thing. And he doesn't murder and attack women, but also... He's not going to engage in what Shaw has done and put himself in a precarious situation. So he feels like the best course of action is to do nothing. And leave her. He just steps and over her. She's sitting there like, oh, 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 oh. and he just walks over like he, her. Because he and... just stares at her dead eyed and just walks away. And Bye-bye. you know what? She is a fucking mother fucking badass. Gets herself and she is Because that is what she needed. Him leaving her in the dust is exactly what she needed for that boost. Yeah, and she gets her motherfucking ass up. She's fucking bleeding profusely and seeing black spots, but she's trying to get the stuff off. It's like hitting the cuts and she's bleeding even more. She gets her hands out. Yeah, she does wrap the tape around her wrist though, her wrist wound and everything and she gets herself up and she's like continuing to go and like it would just it was awesome but i was like you know what she's just a badass she just got herself free and just like badassery and these and two not only that men, but she's like like you said she's bleeding profusely she's literally dying she's on the brink oh, of yeah, death yeah yeah she can barely stumble 
she should not have been able to get more than a few feet and she makes it miles to the road to flag down a car yeah and it's wild so then the book skips forward several weeks later now everyone just assumes she's dead because she was left for dead there's no way she could possibly be alive from that situation and Cole thinks it's time to pay Alistair a visit because he hasn't seen any news articles about her or finding anything else and he's gonna pay him a visit he's gonna make him a little uncomfy now and so he breaks into his house and is just sitting there waiting for him and then basically gives him the what for and it's basically like if we're ever alone in a room again only one of us will walk out breathing like Mm -hmm. this is this is done Alistair had given Cole the roommate's ID that he had swiped because it was just so easy. That's why he, he found the whole thing. It's just so, so easy. So Cole, his, in his weird, curious mind, just wants to go just look at the place that this, this being that he's never really even spared much thought for anyone else before, but he's actually thought about her. He was kind of impressed by her creativity with the dress and the wine because he's never seen anyone actually be able to, like, pull something from nothing and actually create Mm -hmm. and have an eye for colors the way he does. And seeing her laid out naked like that and everything was tempting for him, and he doesn't like that it was tempting for him. Yeah. And she's, like, the first person who's actually kind of stirred some kind of something for him. Mm -hmm. And so it's made him curious. He's already written her off in his mind that she's dead. So what's what harm is this? So he goes and checks out the place she lives on the address. And lo and behold, who walks out the door? So then we get to see what Mara's been up to. Mara is just kind of not doing super awesome. She's trying her best, but she's not doing super awesome. When she had woken up from this whole ordeal, she woke up. She recounts for us. She woke up in the hospital and they saw that she had previous scars on her wrists Mm -hmm. and did not believe her story about being taken. There are such Um, dick holes. And they basically treated her as a suicide attempt. And so now she's just having to like live and try to catch up because she just missed the fucking, all this time the fucking with cops work and are just all this such stuff and, assholes. And she was living basically paycheck to paycheck. So now that she missed all these days in the hospital and being kidnapped, like she's drowning. Yeah. And so she ends up almost kind of begrudgingly going out on a date with her on and off again boyfriend, Josh. Cole, meanwhile, kind of goes in while she's at work. So she sets up this date with Josh and while she's at work, checks out where she lives and looks around her room and checks out all her stuff and finds that she hasn't really done laundry in a while and finds a pair of her underwear on the floor. And it's a little too tempting for him. And he he comes in them. Yeah, he pleases himself with her underwear and leaves them on the floor. and. He sets up. He fucks with her room so bad. Yeah, he kind of just moves stuff around a little bit here and there. Move some shit away around, yeah. And he finds the place across the way so that he can watch her. And so when she comes back from work to actually go on this date that she has set up, she tries to change her clothes, and she knows she's out of laundry, so she just picks up the underwear from earlier in the morning off the floor and puts them on unbeknownst to her cole is watching from across the way as she pulls the underwear on and she's wondering why they're wet she goes maybe i had my period first of all absolutely (laughs) fucking not i don't care how out of clothes i am you will not catch me picking up dirty ass underwear from the floor and then putting first of all if there's clothes on the floor and you don't know if they're dirty, smell them you first. You smell them first. <laughs> you don't just put them on. That's so nasty. Don't worry. That's her I next step. She smells second. them because she goes, oh, I know what cum smells like. Cum has a very distinctive smell. 
to be fair. Yeah. But here's the thing. When you go to pick them up from the floor, wouldn't you feel the wetness at first anyways? You would think. And as you're sliding them up your legs, you would also feel it. Not when it gets all the way up to the top and you're like, why are they wet? Bitch, you're disgusting. That is so gross. That is so gross. Sorry, not and, sorry. That's disgusting. <laughs> also, I understand your distaste for Cole. It's just a book. I found him weirdly amusing in his like pompous clinical way of thinking and his snooty little thing. Like when he was in her room messing with her stuff, it was the, I respect the hustle, but her existence is tawdry and depressing. The thought of waiting tables, taking people's orders and serving their food is offensive to me. Picking up dog shit in the park for mutts you don't even own is worse. I'm surprised she wanted to save herself the night Shaw took her, if this is all she had to come home to. Yeah. <laughs> so I think what it is, is I just don't... I just found him amusing. I and just... I think that's the difference. Is I did not find it amusing. I found it awful. I literally hated him with a... Because I, I just, I saw him like the clinically as he was. Because he's not a real person. I so. We've had this conversation already. I know. I know, but I'm telling you how I, you know, but. Maybe because I can't think clinically, so I can't. Right. And you know what it else is, too, is I've that, dealt with. That has, that's a good point. You can't I, kind of separate that. No, and I think what it is, too, is I've dealt with the men who act like that, and I fucking hate those men. Well, so it, I mean, we all so, have, but. So reading it bothers me a lot. Well, my own Josh was like that. He thought anyone who didn't have money was below him and poor, and so. Trauma. Trauma is what made me like this. Anyways, so this day with Josh. She goes on the date. She decides to go sans underwear because she's not going to wear cum-filled underwear. And she's already late enough. And she knows she cannot be late because it will make Josh very unhappy. And she can't do that. And she's I'll already late enough. i inserted afterwards. I got you. Yeah. She, she's already late enough. And he's very, very controlling. You can see it through all these littered, very, very many red flags. And so she's like, okay, I'm just going without underwear. Go, go, go. And she gets there and he's frustrated that she's late, kind of talks down about her job and basically is like, do you want to order this? And she's like, no. And then he orders it anyways. And he's just being a jerk and he won't stop touching her ears, even though she keeps telling him like not to do that. And you're she's just sitting there wondering why she does anything with this guy ever. She also though is a little overly like sensitive right now and overly jumpy because of the she just got fucking kidnapped oh i know he did bring it up he goes i'm so sorry like he recognized it a little too late but like this uh-huh. whole time i'm just thinking in my head i'm like oh no a josh <laughs> is a piece of shit no <laughs> that never happens that is definitely not the j name that everybody fucking hates and has a bad experience with oh no <laughs> shock ah that's why j names get a bad rep it's literally <laughs> every josh is everywhere uh-huh. <laughs> <It's just funny. laughs> shocking but so obviously after he just watched his semen on her body he so could not resist awful following her to the restaurant and watches this whole date go down and josh is getting very handsy and he's not feeling feelings that he did not know he could feel yeah he's not very Um, happy about it he's getting very frustrated he's contemplating murdering this guy but then she runs out of the restaurant and she's a top priority because josh was really touching her and she had it and he had to follow her you know so because why not that's obviously priorities man priorities so then he follows her all the way home and she is just sick of life and she just drags her mattress out onto the porch and lays out in the pouring rain just lets the rain just fall down on her and uh, And she gets a little bit in the mood Yep. And he just enjoys the performance. Yeah, he does. And, because he's staring you know. at her through a fucking telescope. So she's really growing on him a little bit. Yeah. So he has to get her a little closer. So he finds a way to offer her the studio space she needs. And there's a grant and all this stuff. And 
Oh, but for someone who wow, really doesn't super... care about her, you're all, you're doing super... a lot of awful things to keep to care about her there, Cole. Come on, man. Super affordable and all this stuff and she's loving it. It's pretty cool. And then they find out that there's a scholarship possible and they just have to let the board check out the art that they're working on. Oh, of course, let everybody wander through because he's carefully constructed the way that they will come face to face. Because here's the other thing too. He mentions quite a few times that he's literally only wanting to do all this stuff so he can fuck with her. Cause like, it's so funny reading it. Cause he's like, I don't care with her. I just want to have her at my mercy. And I think like, he was just trying to justify it within himself. He was. He was no, I, un- yeah. I know. I'm just saying that's what he is saying. He goes, I just want her at my mercy. In my brain, I'm like, bro, you're literally, you care about this woman. You're just trying to tell yourself you don't. But he doesn't know that yet. No, he doesn't. But as a reader, I am saying, Uh and then I just wrote, Mara (laughs) is an independent woman, motherfuckers. I love her. She's great. So, of course, he's on the committee for the scholarship. Because he owns the damn place and he owns he the damn made building, the he owns scholarship. the damn scholarship. He just like he's just like you know what? I want to find a way to give her money. Let's just do this now. Well, it was more like His I want to find a situation yeah. to force her to be in my presence to see my face. Yeah, his assistant even kind of questions it a little bit. First of all, don't remember her name. Loved her. Yeah. So she sees Cole. Yeah, that doesn't go well. <laughs> no, she's pissed. She is now questioning even whether he's the one who right, kidnapped she, her. Because she hasn't seen him since the thing. And even when the whole kidnapping thing went, she remembered the second She was she sure dates. at the time that it was not the guy who originally came up behind her. Right, but at the, but at her, the time too, took she took her out of the trunk. Right, but at the time, she didn't know that it was Cole stepping over her. But she's right. like, I recognize his face, but I don't know how to do it. And oh, so yes. when he comes in, it all fucking just hits her all at once. And she goes, oh, mm-hmm. shit. And she's absolutely livid. Because in her brain, she's like, you fucking left me there. You left me there to die. Right. I was literally and now she's even questioning. And now she's even questioning if the whole thing was him and her brain is misunderstanding like the proportions and the the different size differences and because what kind of sick fuck would just leave her there right and i know even before she was even originally questioning if there was even a second person because she's like i was bleeding out so maybe i was just thinking there was another person Mm -hmm. like staring at me no no right she thought she made him up or something from yeah yeah and he even was like no one's gonna believe you oh man he made me so mad throughout the whole book. <laughs> I was loving it. I it know because fantastic. you're a psychopath. I am maybe a little bit, but it was fantastic. I was loving the whole dynamic. I was loving. This is supposed to be a psychopath book. I, I was loving it. So she goes back and she stops what she's working on. And she just starts painting like aggressively a new painting that is solely inspired by her entire ordeal yes and he's watching her of course on the camera that's installed in her yeah. studio mm-hmm. so she sees him she at work she, she recognizes that there's a camera in there as she's painting like when she's she turns around and she goes there's a camera in here after she freaked out right and he's loving her entire meltdown so her next day at work, she has a brunch guest and he's waiting for her and he wants to chat and he wants her to be his protege. He, he wants them to have a, a civil relationship. There's obviously nothing that she can do with the whole situation. No one's going to believe her. She might as well benefit out of this. And it's funny too, because there's she, been she plenty won of- the scholarship. Yay. You owe me. It's so funny because there were definitely times where he goes, I'm going to make her this because I, he's like, I have to kill her. I want to kill her. He does not actually want to kill her, but in his brain, that's what he thinks he wants is to kill her. He does on some level. So he's like, I, well, yeah, because he's a serial killer, but he doesn't kill women. But anyway, so in his brain, you can see his internal thought process and he goes, yeah, 
Yeah, I'm going to do this so that I can kill her. I have it's to almost her. like his biggest prize of all and his most coveted prize to kill her. They're at brunch. And she does talk with him. And he manages to get a lot of her backstory out in this conversation. And she even comments, like, later on, she goes, he knows more about now my past life because her mom sucks, by the way. Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise. There's a terrible mother in this book. Oh, goodness. So throughout the whole brunch, he's asking her questions and she is just telling him these things. And he's kind of mean to her, too. He goes, so daddy died leaving you alone Mm. with mommy dearest and not a penny between you. And she goes, I'm not a sideshow for your amusement. And he's like, why are you well, so combative? Why aren't you being cooperative? And, and she's like, like, the day that my father died was the worst day of my life. And he's like, so far. Yeah. So he sees her painting that she's been working on. And he's actually impressed. He is, except he does tell her that the hands need a little bit more work. But she knows that. I know. It's just they funny. can see the same errors. And he's realizing that. They have a lot of similarities in the way that they critique things and the way that their brain thinks about art. And he's really seeing that similarity, which he never felt anyone could rise to his level before. And he's he's, he's almost struggling, struggling with that. Well, he's very egotistical and he's struggling mm. with it because no one can ever be as good as him. God forbid. Sorry. And But she's also like not happy to see him because it's like, you look like you want to stab me. And they they kind of come back together a little bit. And he's trying to like see if he can get a rise out of her and see if they have other things in common too. Because he's like, you want to kill him, don't you? You want to kill Alistair. You want to hurt him. And he was just like goading her. He was trying to figure out if because they have such a connection art wise, if that kind of serial killer concept is in her too and he's like trying to figure out like well would you hurt someone kind of thing would you want to hurt somebody like no 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 I don't you know I wouldn't I wouldn't hurt anybody and even the person who did this to you would you hurt him and she has a really good like little paragraph yeah she's there like too. she says evil men always want to justify what they do and it's not by telling you all their reasons no they want to push you and bend you and break you until you snap Until you do something you thought you'd never do. Until you can't even recognize yourself. Until you're as bad as they are. That's how they justify themselves. By trying to make you the same as them. Yep. And And he goes, so you wouldn't kill him if he was right now as helpless as you were? You wouldn't kill him? She goes, no. Like, she looked him dead in the eyes and didn't even flinch. She goes, no. Yeah, it's... But she also still thinks it's him because, like, he's like, well, what would you do if then what if right. he wasn't she, helpless now she's she... thinking it's it's cole that did it exactly yeah. she's like i'm looking at him kind of thing yeah but i mean she was just kind of giving him what she was getting so next come weeks of his obsession with her following her watching her and also weeks of her obsession with her painting and it's time to show her painting and it's time for new voices, which is the showcase that it's going to be displayed at. He sent her a dress and told her to be ready at a certain time and that they would walk in together because she's his protege. And he does literally should. exactly what I would do, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah, he sends her the dress and's like, I'll be picking you up at this time. And this bitch goes, nah, not to him. But she goes, I'm going to wear my own clothes because fuck that. And also, I know he's going to be here at this time. I'm going to book my ass over there before that. Not only because she doesn't want to listen to him, but she knows that if she walks in on his arm, all that like status and everything will be with that. And she wants to get a real, true, authentic yes. view Reaction. of what people actually think of her painting without being on Cole's arm and having that status. So she gets there early to be able to see what people are actually looking and talking and thinking about her painting. Do you want to know who does not like that? Cole. He is absolutely enraged. But she fixes that because, well, she realizes that everyone loves her painting. So she's on a high anyways, but he walks in all mad and 
Oh, big fat man. He's a big oh, manly his, man. His poor little man feelings were hurt because she wouldn't <laughs> and, do what she asked. But she just walks up to him and kisses him. It's like, it's all good. Everything's great. And he's just confused. <laughs> but then, like, kisses her super hard back and viciously they kiss each other until mm-hmm. they're both bleeding. So, and then that makes her very happy and she's very grateful. Because she realizes how much he's done for her, how big of a deal this is all to her. And she's just feeling a lot of emotions with all the praise. And she realizes she could never have gotten there without him. And she wants to return the favor a little bit. And drags him off to a room and gets down on her knees. Not to pray. But well, she's kind of praying. You know, to do the other thing. The not kinda... safe for work thing. Um, They're not safe for work. He does not. I, she does not get on her knees and pray to God. So he would well, like her. He thinks he's God. But they are interrupted before anything can come out to play with because there's a man in the room. And then and, he uh, does the stupidest thing a man has ever oh, done oh. in his entire existence well, because he's dumb. But, so the kiss threw him off balance. Yeah, because and... he goes, this isn't, sp- feelings? What are those? I shouldn't have those. I need to, I need to destroy this entire situation because it makes me uncomfortable. You know so, what? This is why Ariel fits so well with the story because she related to Cole a lot because she goes, what are feelings? What are those? I related to Mara a lot. You related okay. to both of them. Maybe on a <laughs> lot of levels. No, <laughs> maybe on the, I'm going to stab you. No, she can't. <laughs> I'm um, really too far away, bitch. I know too many secrets, um, so the only way out is death. So, so Cole, Cole, Cole. Dumb ass motherfucker. <laughs> this is where I was like, Cole is so fucking full of himself with this exact sentence that he like brings out. Ugh. Oh, Cole. <laughs> Such a dumb ass. So, so he, how do I want to word this? He basically offers her services. To this, to other this man. man, because she's so grateful for everything he's done, she can share her gratefulness all around. Because this would be when I would owed. bite his dick off. Well, it had the dick hadn't come out yet, so that's probably why. I would have found a way. And oh, she is so pissed. Yeah, he's like, I'm sure she'd be happy to have you as an appetizer to me, kind of thing, and. Yeah. That shit sets her right the fuck off. She's already proven to be a capable student. Which makes what she does next the best part of this entire book. Oh. 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 I'm ready for it. Ready for it. So she, while they were at the party. This is where I did see myself in her eyes because you know, bitch, I would do the same thing. While they were at the party, before they had snuck off, they had waved to her friend Aaron and Aaron was with another roommate of hers, her, the other roommate's boyfriend and another guy. And she waved to them all and she knew the other guy, Logan, because he's the one who did the tattoo on her rib cage. He's a tattoo artist. Mm -hmm. And he was like, who's that guy? Cause he felt like he was familiar. Like I've seen him before. Who is he? Well, he's seen him before because he stalked all her social medias. So, on her stormy McStorm wig out of the castle, she drags a prize dragon on her way and says, Logan, you're coming with me. And she takes him back to her studio where the cameras are on and ready, which, of course, Cole is immediately notified when the motion sensor for her camera. And And his first thought is, oh, she's back at the studio. She didn't bring this dude home. I'm going to go watch her work. Mm -hmm. He's in for a rude surprise. No, 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 no. (laughs) Because the show has just begun. He is about to see. This scene. Now, (laughs) the pettiness is so good. Oh, the scene is perfection. And I wish that other encounters in this book had this level of perfection because this scene is just glorious in its utter fuckiness and pettiness and just all around just amazingness 
they basically fuck like rabbits on every fucking surface and go like gangbusters as and hard as she humanly is possible. Just and she's on a putting on show. a show for the camera. And they knock over paint and then they're fucking in the paint on and they're a fucking canvas. On a canvas. Oh, there she's just in her glory. She is just like the biggest porn star you've ever seen. And this Logan guy is like having the ride of his fucking life over here. Literally. Literally. It was just, it was great because my note on this part was not Mara playing games, LOL. Love the fact that Cole pissed her off. So she chose to grab a dude and bring him back to the studio. She knows he'll see in the camera just fucking brilliant. And I said, also, Cole's a dumbass. And then I was like, see? Male fragility at its absolute finest. <laughs> so then she bids the dude to Logan and Mara marches that painting that they just fucked all over for on the floor right up to Cole's office and hangs it prime right and center in his office. Fabulous. And all, and then I, all, Fabulous. All I had to say is he fucked around and found out and he found out. And then I was like, oh no, feelings? What are those? Because this man is like, is this jealousy I feel? What is happening? So, yeah, yes, he, he went and he saw around and found that painting the fuck out. in his office and he destroyed this like $3 million, like priceless to art. him, priceless yeah. to him art that he was not willing to part with. And he just had a jealous rage chef's kiss so good. it was fantastic I fantastic absolutely was fucking fantastic but he actually had some growth in this moment too okay because he said instead in that moment when she knelt before me my impulse was cruelty i wanted her badly and because i didn't like the feeling of need of weakness i tried to humiliate her i wanted to force her to submit but i should have known she won't fucking do it. She wouldn't fucking submit while bleeding and bound at the point of death. I could have spent the night with her instead of watching it on a screen, tasting her, smelling her, touching her, making art with her. I wish I had. I've never regretted anything I've done until now. And then, so here's the thing. You say he I has- I said, will a, you learn your lesson? <laughs> he has a very, very brief moment of it. And then he does crazier shit. He pays Logan a visit. At his tattoo shop. He has grown. Um, but he does something even crazier next. Not listen, grown. He does have growth because he's feeling regret. But now he wants to piss all over his territory. And make her see that he was jealous. And that he means business. And he wants her. Growth. If you meet any of these men in growth. real life. Red flag and please run the fuck away. Because this shit will end you dead in a ditch. <laughs> These are not real men, though. It's okay. There <laughs> are real men like this out there, and bitch run. A bitch I doesn't run, so many... and this bitch would run. I have so much with her and her little weird stuff that I was like, it's a really good thing that no serial killer is interested in me and wants to kidnap me because it would not end well. <laughs> you don't know that. You think I'm going to find somebody like Cole? Maybe. Not as hot, though. So yeah, he pays Logan a visit at his tattoo shop because he put two and two together, found the Instagram post and yeah, figured it out. No, no, no. He did not put two and two together. What did he actually do? Restocked her. Thank you. After a lot, he decides to spare Logan's life. So he was doing Barely. such a kind service. I think Logan's Logan. like, I didn't know she had a boyfriend. And I think that panic, he, he was, listen, the serial killer jealous for the first time did not kill logan who just fucked her like fucking he is not his woman i've seen like the standard is there someone needs to check ariel's basement and her attic because i'm concerned let me tell you logan is lucky to be alive so he did Logan a very nice thing by only using him as a canvas to practice his tattooing on. So after he got to practice for a little while it's on not his way, whether he's alive or dead, so he could be dead. I think he's alive. Very because much do not think he is. 
he did not use his pieces for a sculpture and he did not dispose of him. And I think we would have known. He was used in the way that he was supposed to be used. So then he came and found Mara at the studio and decided to um, fix Erase. the tattoo yeah, he that wanted Logan to... gave her. Yeah, he just he's so jealous that he tattoos over the tattoo that Logan gave her because this man and is And she jealous. loves it. So After... happy days. Okay, but yeah. here's the thing. Didn't he chain her up so she wouldn't? <laughs> and he um got her off while doing okay, it. So so okay, so here's here's my comment about this. I sincerely had to suspend all everything for this moment. I said, I don't know if he can actually tattoo her and get her off at the exact same time. I was wondering because the skill she was one. she's moving a lot from like obviously oh, not she's her trying arms. to stay still. Okay, can you... Okay, I'm not going to ask that question because that's going a little too far. I just know, personally, if I'm going through the same things that she's going through... He's a professional artist, okay? You can't control people's bodies moving when they're doing the things. I'm just saying, there's no fucking way in hell this man is tattooing and doing it. Absolutely not. I literally had to... Like, I'm just sitting here like, this is not something that can fucking happen. Like, what the fuck? So, so then he turns the gun around and hands it to her and says, your turn. And she's expected to, on the fly, give him a tattoo. Yeah. And she does. She gives him a snake tattoo. And then he gets her mother's backstory. I and, um, fucking hate they, her mother. Holy shit. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning, oh, look, another mother who's garbage. It's another one. And another one. So they're vibing. They're cool. They're tatted up, kind of doing their thing. And he is definitely not being subtle with his watching of her. No. In fact, while she's at work, like working the bar he's just sitting in the bar now instead of watching from outside or something so when a patron grabs her ass he flips the fuck out and gets her fired because the whole thing well no one touches what is even though you know feelings boo but so he was worried that he would see alistair at the new Uh, voices yeah i keep Um, calling him shaw in my notes (laughs) Because he refers to him so, as Shaw a lot. A lot. He he switches back and forth a lot, and that drives me crazy. So he was surprised he didn't see him because he was worried about the confrontation of Alistair seeing her alive. Mm-hmm. So he felt like they kind of dodged a bullet for a little while after New Voices, and then he realized why they hadn't seen him because he's been on a little bit of a spree and getting his jollies going. Yeah. And carving up some women, because that's what, that's what Shaw she, does, don't you know? That's what he does best. That's what the Alistair Shaw does. It's time for the Artist Guild Halloween party. And she actually listens to him this time and waits for him to arrive. And Sometimes she's talking, she can listen. She's talking with Erin, and she's going as Medusa. And she's made her costume up. And he is going as a stone statue to her Medusa. It's kind of cute. And she's basically like, I'll see you there, Aaron. Cool beans. And uh, Aaron's super jealous because she only had her one hookup with Shaw that she called dibs on. And now all of a sudden, here's Mara hanging out with Cole Blackwell all the time. And so they go to this Halloween party and guess who's there? His worst nightmare. Except it's not his worst nightmare. It's just not convenient for him. (laughs) Right. So she's noticing that he doesn't always have the mask that he puts on for everybody else for her. And she's really digging that. She feels like she knows him pretty well and that she has gotten to really see him but she feels like there's just one layer that she hasn't quite gotten to yet but yeah they see shaw and his face like lights up 
Like, well, he, he goes through a range of emotions. A range of emotions, but he's he just goes like, through shock. Aw. Like, Sorry. <laughs> like horror, confusion, and then glee. Because in his mind, Cole succumbed to his interests and his compulsions and has kept her as a pet and t- has taken his present that he is given. But Cole knows that when Alistair Shaw goes on these sprees, that he usually kills three in a row before he cools down and he's only killed two. So he knows that now that he's seen her alive, that that third is going to be her because it's going to be perfect. Because Alistair gave Cole that toy and he can take it away and it'll be just even sweeter. So he makes a huge asshole kind of move again in his way of trying to protect her and the situation and removes that last mask to scare her. And this is where he reveals basically that he does what I do, but poorly. He basically outs him and says, he's a monster, but I'm a better monster, like better at doing monster thing to scare her, sends her home. And so then he goes and waits at the house across the way watching because he knows Shaw's going to come. And of course, Shaw comes. He comes, he watches, and then turns back. And Cole follows him for a while because he's like, okay, I'm going to take him out. I'm going to just rid everyone of the problem. I'm going to take him out. But he's also like, this could be a trap because he's obviously, it's like, I really just don't know. But either way, we'll come face to face with each other and this will be it. So he follows Shaw and shocking, it is a trap. Shaw has killed another one and has left it and has called the police and lured him in. And now he's running because he's left in this precarious situation and is seconds away from getting caught and is diving off rooftops and gets hurt doing so. And he's injured. Yeah. And he realizes in this mad chase to not get caught by the cops that he says, Mara weakens me. It was chasing after Shaw on impulse, believing I had to act quickly to protect her that put me in this position. Now my ankle is puffed up like a snake bite. I can barely stand. Worse, she weakens my mind, my decision making. She warps my goals and values, making me think I care about things I never even gave a fuck about before. I can't protect her. Her death is inevitable. But I'll be damned if Shaw is the one to do it. Mar belongs to me. I'm the only one who gets to kill her. And he revisits back the, well, if anyone's going to kill her, it's going to be me. She's my prize. And then he starts plotting her death again. While also protecting her and watching over her so that Shaw can't get her. It was in this moment. She saw the dynamic between the two of them. She realized all the times that Cole has referred to her as been given to him as a gift and all this stuff. And how he compared himself to Shaw. And she comes to the realization that it was Shaw who took her and left her there for him. And she realizes everything and has come to that conclusion. Which, spoiler alert, but surprises Cole because, I mean, he didn't have that much faith in her ability to, like, figure that completely out. But Yeah. So he lets her visit his studio like she's been asking and asking and asking and asking to do because he's like, my next big piece will be her. And then she shows up and she makes comments on his unfinished pieces and is actually seeing the same things and is helpful to him and she has like this little talk with him explaining that she has that realization and how she realizes she sees a little too much and she has that kind of pep talk like you've been watching over me you might have told yourself that it was for your own fucked up reasons but you actually do care about me and I know you're not going to hurt me she basically told him that um, he wasn't going to hurt her. And he cuffs her to the table and they Bang. get it on. Let's get it on. So this is the part I have a problem with. This with all the spanking. Yeah. I didn't like it. Okay, here's the thing. It was interesting. It okay. was an interesting choice. So I, for this, congratulations and happy birthday to everybody. 
I appreciate some good spanking. Like, I dig it. I'm a fan. Did I get spanked as a child? Yes. Do I want a man to bring that up in the middle of hitting me? Absolutely not. It wasn't. I understand, but in my brain, as soon as he mentioned, oh, did he do this to you? Literally detailing her experience with, it was her stepfather, right? That did it? Yeah, but it wasn't like as a child type of situation. No, I understand, but he was asking questions about it. But like the way that it was worded to me made me feel really icky. And I was like, using her experience from her stepdad, I'm like, maybe he's doing it to purposely torture her or, or try to change her mind about it. But for me, it felt icky. And it's only just because, like, if I'm in that position, if a man ever brought that shit up, you can bet your sweet fucking ass I would be done. I'd be like, please don't bring that up while you're doing this to me. It was not my favorite thing to read necessarily because it's not my favorite. But I understood the entire thing and I understood where he was coming from and I understood that he was giving her what she needed in that moment. I think at the beginning it just didn't feel like that. It just felt like he was literally utilizing her trauma to further do his own weird shit in his brain because he was still throughout the whole book he was going back and forth between wanting to torture her and he felt bad and he did stop and like let her talk through it and but it just in the beginning was, like it his just way felt of gross them to me. trauma healing to get I to a point. I get it. It just in the beginning felt so gross to me when he was doing it. And I was like, oh, oh, I don't like this. And then my thought process was, Ariel, what the fuck? <laughs> what are you making yeah. me read right now? I don't want to know anything about we already had an issue with the stepdad thing before in the past. I thought it was quite intense, but like and it, like I said, wasn't it wasn't my favorite. It wasn't, it, it wasn't my favorite, but I understood it and I didn't see it as like, oh, this is icky or this is, you know, what it is. It's just, it was definitely what it was. Yeah, it no, just, I just, I saw it as a, I really wish that they came together and had a really hot scene and like, yeah, how... I just felt like the stepdad should not have been brought up and just leave it as it is. <laughs> like I was, he wouldn't have been cool, I guess. So, well, I would have liked him more. Well, you didn't like him anyways. So. He could have redeemed himself. Probably not. He could have. If he didn't bring Anyways, his stepdad. Anyways, so she's happy with what happened and she feels good and she feels that there was some catharsis in that and it's all gravy. So she goes home the next day and goes to get ready for work or whatever and opens her bedroom door and Aaron is laying in her bed. And her bed is saturated, like soaking, sopping wet, which I thought was so weird. I'm like, what's with the water? I like, this is weird. And there's flowers everywhere. Like I obviously knew what had happened, but I was like, what's with the water? She did not want to believe what had happened for a minute. And I know, but there was a present left. This one was just for her in the form of Aaron. And once she gets taken to the police station for questioning because she's the one who found the body and she's adamant to everyone needs to know that it was Alistair Shaw, but they're like, dude, he has an alibi. He was with a girl. And Cole even told her like, don't say anything. It's not going to do anything. You're just going to make things bad for you. Don't say anything. But she's adamant. I need to tell everyone it's Alistair Shaw. And they show her an aerial shot of what she looks like and that's when she sees that she's been posed like Ophelia who had drowned and it's a famous painting. So the artist made her painting on her bed of her roommate. So Cole is like, fucking no, gets her out of that police station and is like, nope, you're only safe when you're with me. You are moving in with me. End of story. Done. And actually end of story. Cause the end, I want to say I really loved the unraveling of Cole's carefully constructed composed self. I know he wasn't your thing, but I really loved watching him go from this just void of just anything and just like, I am God and blah, blah, blah. And just watching him spiral as he's adding and just gathering emotions in his bucket and 
I just, I loved the unraveling of his self. I appreciated the unraveling because he was very, to me, insufferable in the beginning. And I was just like, oh, this man is just so ego driven and so full of himself. And I understand it because he's definitely a psychopath. And so he's just got a lot and he claims to have no feelings. And it just him commenting on, oh, she's so poor. That's so gross. And I think what the problem was to me is he just came across as just so, so snobby and like pretentious. And I just hated it. And maybe it's my own personal bias of dealing with fucking people like that that annoy the shit out of me. And on page, I just wanted to smack him in the goddamn face. I did like him unraveling and realizing, oh shit, I do have emotions and that she was kind of getting to him a lot more throughout. And then it was funny to see him go from, I just have to kill her. And what are these emotions? What is this? What is jealousy? What the fuck is this bullshit? In my brain, I was thinking, who authorized this emotion (laughs) like that's all I could think of when he would go through those things I just I don't know I still not a fan of him I think that she that she deserves better and she deserves a better person because she is well I think that they'll come together because we have to remember that this is a duet and the way that it's written it's not like a cliffhangery thing it's like it's two halves so it's like really we only read half the book Mm-hmm. So I, I have a feeling that we're going to see them like grow into their relationship and grow together in that second book. Which, surprise, we're not spinning a wheel this time because our next book is book two. Sorry. So, sorry, sorry, not guys. sorry. Who's your least favorite character this week, Crystal? I have two. Two? Is it Cole? Obviously it's Cole. And not Cole Turner. It's Cole Blackwell. I don't know who Cole Turner is. Who's Cole Turner? Is this a Gilmore Girls reference that you're giving me? That you no. Know no. First, you don't watch Gilmore Girls, and now you're telling me you don't know Charmed well enough to know Cole Turner? Dude, it's been so many years since I've watched Charmed, honey. You're going to make me cry. I love Charmed. I have not seen it since I was in high school. But Cole is it's been like... been like 15, 16 But Cole years. is like Phoebe's husband who was the source oh. of all evil. Okay. The source of all evil. Kind of like this Cole. Anyways. (laughs) I thought you'd appreciate that. (laughs) Cole and Shaw are both my two least favorite characters. So my least favorite was Erin. And I'm not that sad that I'm not that sad that she died. Just saying. Because she was a trash friend and a trash roommate. And Every single time she came up, she was just trash and not a nice trash panda way. She was just a trash Muppet and she's my least favorite character and I'm not sad she's dead. And I think it's pretty cool that she was posed in a cool painting in her death. So at least she had something good out of it. Someone really needs to check Ariel's spaces for (laughs) dead people right now because Jesus fucking Christ. The comments (laughs) you've made through this entire book have been a little concerning. Who was your favorite character? Mara. I have two. I really, I really vibed with Mara. Mara and his assistant, which I can't remember her name. She was so much your favorite that you don't even know her name. Yeah, I know. It starts with an S, I think. What I did, did rate like it? her. I liked her. Oh, wait, what well, Amazon rate it first? Okay, well, I guess we're not going to go into why I like these people. Oh, um, sorry, Amazon, go ahead. No, it's okay. Fuck me, right? I, uh, thought, I thought you were, you were done talking. No, Amazon rates it a 4.3. And good I thought you talked about them enough that that's why you like them. You green, doesn't green matter. About it. We're moving on. Says Ariel wants to move on. And Goodreads gives it a three point eight four. What did Amazon do it? Because I missed a four point three because Ariel wasn't paying attention. Sorry, I was in the basement <laughs> preparing your coffin. <laughs> you wouldn't kill me. No, no, not yet. Just kidding. Sorry. So Amazon was a four point well, three. If, if and... I go missing, guys, or anything happens to me, look to Ariel. First. Goodreads was a three point eight four. Eight four. Eight, four. Okay. Ariel not well, fucking paying attention to literally. What did you rate this book? I rated it a 3.75. Thank you. You're welcome. I rated this book a 4.5. I I super vibed with this book. I had a couple issues and I wish that all the scenes, all the schmucks were at the level of epic amazingness as the revenge scene and that there was some detail and that I just I wish that we had some of that energy 
in all the and I probably would have almost rated this a five if they had that kind of I know I was really vibing this so my thing is is it wasn't bad it's not the best thing I've ever written it wasn't like no I was super into this for me it just I don't know like I liked the book don't get me wrong I just I think hating Cole for so much of this book really just I didn't care about him I yeah. just didn't care that he was a character in this book. And I he's think like you connected this... it to like real life people too much for you and me. It's that not. E- it's not even that. I just. I guess I just don't read enough where the male main character acts like this, and I don't like him hmm. because I've read other books with male characters who are serial killers, and it, they don't come across this way. And I think he just. He was too arrogant and full of himself, and I. Just well, you kept comparing it to people you knew. I and understand. That's why, well, right. in this conversation, yes, I'm trying to explain right. it in a way that other people can understand. But he came across to me as just so arrogant and full of himself, and thinking that anyone who didn't have money was so beneath him. And I think that that just put me off, and I just did not care about him enough because I've read yeah. other books with that kind of a character in it, and I don't like him. And I think gotcha. it's just. I just felt it was true to his character, and that's just who he was. And I so. Understand. I get that. I just, I didn't like it. So that, I think that was the only part that like really knocked it down for me. Other than that, I mean, it was fine. Like, it's not something that I'm going to be like, oh my God, you need to read this book. This is a thing you absolutely have to read. Like, it's just, it was fine. See, and I really, I super vibed with this. I even hit up Angie, who's done some episodes with us. And I was like, listen, I know you've read this and I don't want to spoil anything for Crystal. I said, but I need to talk about this book because I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm loving the fuck out of this book. And I don't know what's wrong with me because I can't find anything wrong with it so far (laughs) because I was just super like vibing. Yeah. And even the stalking didn't bother me. It was just, honestly, it was just his personality, (laughs) which is why I was single for a very long time. So men's personalities just don't vibe with me sometimes, most of the time. What about your cucumber rating? Four. Okay. I came prepared, bitch. I wrote all this shit down. I did too. Look at us. Um, yeah. I yeah, just, no, there I, wasn't, uh, I said it was fine. There wasn't a lot, especially. There was not a lot. And I think that that was to its detriment. And I think that's also what it knocked it down for me as well. Because I think yeah. I was going in expecting there to be more. And there exactly. wasn't. And then I had to tell myself. That oh, and then, of course, like I, the whole spanking scene really fucking ruined it for me. And I was like. I, I, and that's why it's like I, I, I kept teetering between a four and a five because there wasn't a lot. But there was like eclectic scenes and that usually pushes things higher because it's just it's a different dynamic but I kept having to remind myself because that's what I was disappointed too I'm like there wasn't really much and it didn't really feel like they had that connection as much but I have to keep telling myself like oh well we're only halfway through so dude when I, so it's funny because one. when I was reading this and I'm halfway through this book I'm like I'm Ariel's gonna be pissed we have to wait so long but so Join us next week for the first time ever. It's not going to be a special. That's a part a tour. Second. And join us next week for the second half of this duet. We will be reading There Is No Devil by Sophie Lark. Join yeah. us. Be there. Yeah. Be square. Be- I will read the description of it as well because normally when we, you Good know, call. it's not yep. very long. It's very short. Because yeah, normally when we spin the wheel, we do read it. So There Is No Devil by Sophie Lark. I couldn't kill Mara, but that doesn't mean Shaw won't. She's living in my house, always with me, always under my control. The more I push her, the more she pushes back. She's peeling away my secrets one by one, and I'm tempting her to do things she never thought she'd do. Shaw won't stop hunting her. When the time comes to act, will Mara be ready? The Lark notes. I was so pleased how many women identified with Mara's character. With her sensory issues and history of trauma. Weird. Sorry. (laughs) I added the weird part. It sounds crazy to call this an inspirational story of murder. But at the end of part two, I hope you will indeed feel inspired by Mara's journey. There is Um, no devil is the second half of the Sinner's duet. Reader be warned. This is a dark and steamy serial killer romance that may be triggering to some. There you go. Crystal needs to open her mind I the possibility have been. of coal to the possibility oh. of coal because I'm just going to give you a little snippet of the dedication 
because it says this book is about finding love and acceptance in another person and more importantly loving and accepting yourself so they are going to be fabulous growing together so okay you need to but he, if he can grow better than this book and not be such a dumb ass motherfucker so up his own asshole then maybe i'll forgive him 